All right, guys, this is part two of the disc brake conversion kit on our 69 Roadrunner. If you missed part one, I'm going to stick it here, I think, right up in here. Pop. All right. Click on that part one, get caught up. Hold on a second. I apologize if you can hear that. There's someone on an extremely loud tractor bush hogging the field behind my house right now, and they're making laps, so I apologize. That being said, this is a kit that we got off eBay. Not the most expensive kit you can buy. We're just seeing what it is, how it's going to work out. There's a lot of issues that we're having to deal with that may or may not come up if you had a more expensive kit. We are still on conversion of the front brakes at this part of the video. As I said in part one, I'm releasing some of this older footage and trying to get us caught back up to speed on where we're at now with it. So without further ado, let's just do. So update on the disc brake conversion for the 69 Roadrunner. Like I said, no instructions with this kit. So we're trying to like Google stuff and figure out where things go and how it goes together. Um, no diagrams or anything so the pedal bracket that we thought went under the dash and sandwiched into the firewall turns out it goes in the engine bay and it's a bracket to mount the booster to the firewall that kind of changes everything up that all the tubing and lines that we've bent and put in there are all going to need a little adjusting now. I don't know if we'll have to make new ones or not. So, um, I guess this is just some of the stuff you're going to mess with if you don't have any kind of instructions, don't have any way to figure out what goes where other than trying to Google pictures of stuff, which is what we're doing. So, headed back over there now, disassemble what we've done basically and start over. Uh, see how much headache it gives us hopefully you know hopefully things fit back together a little bit better than they went the first time uh, so let's get over there let's get some stuff torn apart and see where it takes us so this is how we have it now and we think that all this needs to go in between the booster and the firewall so we get to take it all back apart and redo it with all these pieces basically sandwiched in between there and we will have to change up how all the brake lines are configured and somehow none of this got recorded or footage was lost so we will catch back up when we think everything's right for about the third maybe fourth time of installing master cylinders on this car all right, update here on this situation. We got the booster off for the second or so time. It's laying right here. We did get it on with all this bracket and stuff, and nothing was really working right on it. And it seemed actually like the master cylinder that came with that was leaking down. It just wouldn't bleed all the air out of it, no matter what we did, and it was a pain in the butt. So we got another master cylinder. Uh, I think from O'Reilly's factory replacement style and didn't like it. Got another master cylinder from somewhere online that we have on here now that is some kind of high performance deal and has much larger reservoirs on it. And so we do like that with the disc brakes, but none of these other master cylinders will even bolt up to this booster. So that thing is out of the picture and we're running the high performance master cylinder with the big reservoirs and no boosters and everything else pretty much went together pretty simple all this stuff went together just like it came apart uh, there was really no surprise with any of this it just bolted right on the new spindle bolted on in place of the old one and everything just went on almost like factory so that is actually really good it's just that we had so many issues with the master cylinder after four billion different ones this is a setup that we're going with now so now on to getting them bled out and see what other problems we run into 
All right, so we've been messing with all this. This is at least the third master cylinder that's been on here. We're still having issues with these brakes not pumping up good. And we're hoping that we got it figured out on the soft line going back here to the rear end. So what can happen with these soft lines is they will swell up on the inside and then when you mash your brakes, it'll squeeze some fluid through, but when you let off the brake, it won't want to return it back in. And then you'll get an issue where your brakes don't really want to bleed out right, they don't work right, the shoes are sticking and grabbing and stuff. Um, so we ended up deciding just to go ahead and do disc brakes on the back too. So we're going to tear all this apart. We got a kit to do disc brakes on the back. Comes with some brackets, calipers, pads, and then we also got the soft lines. I don't know. They're, here we go. Soft lines to go with it. Two for the sides and one for that one going over to the rear end. So first thing we're going to do with this stuff is paint it up. We're going to do all these brackets in black. We're going to do calipers in red so it kind of matches the theme we got going in the front. Now this rear conversion kit, since we had so much trouble with the eBay kit on the front end, we decided to go through JEGS on it. Get something that may have a little more quality to it. Maybe the parts will fit better. But you never really know until you try to get it on there. So let's see how this goes. I'm going to get these wired up, hanging from the post out here, and we'll start with the black. So we made some wind chimes. Hang them up on the front porch, it will be looking good. I got some of this. Krylon paint and primer all in one. I don't know. Let's see what you think about it. Stuff's drying about as fast as you can lay it down today. coats good enough good enough all right I may have a battery issue by the end of this but we're just gonna keep going for now getting the red paint bam on the caterpillars <laughs> that's one coat this is some um, I'm going to show you this second ago. Caterpillar paint made just for the caterpillars. Come back and hit them with a second coat in a minute. Alright, that's three coats on these bad boys. Try to make sure at least the area that you're going to see the most is really nice and coated. But I wanted to get a good coat over all of it just so that if it starts popping rust in one spot, you know, it'll kind of bleed its way around. So at least get a good coating on everything but a real nice thick coating get a nice shine on that part you see right there meanwhile the grinder is way down here and I still hear it running so we got a minute before we can start reassembly Let's see if these are drying out oh yeah it's basically let's see yeah a Brazilian degrees out so Things are drying quick, lucky for us. I'm going back in the AC. 
Got a pair of vice grips on the soft line there. Maybe all the fluid won't leak out the whole time we got everything apart. Then we're gonna take this e-brake cable off. Maybe it's back in here somewhere, I don't know. Have to take all this apart to see it. Alright, we got all the brake stuff out of the way. Emergency brakes disconnected. The line to the cylinder is disconnected. So now we're going to try and yank this axle out, get this backing plate out, and then we can start putting some of that other new stuff on. Oh, these are left handed threads. How about that? Let me get it all the way tight before I start taking it off and realize it's going the wrong way. Old Dodge in their left handed threads. Otherwise, everybody's wheels are just going to fall off. So we're going to put this slide hammer deal on here and see if we can yank this axle out. I don't know how this lines up. Something like that, I guess, huh? Looks good enough. Lefties. Lefty tidy, righty loosey. <laughs> Maybe this whole thing here comes off. Yeah. All right, so this kit came with some longer bolts that we gotta swap out. It says these top four gotta be swapped out to the longer ones because that's where that bracket, this uh, kind of spacer is gonna go on there. And then the caliper brackets are gonna have double thickness over some of these. So, did one and it popped right out easy. Maybe we'll get that lucky with the rest. Oh yeah. Bam. I don't know what spring things. Well those came right out. Alright, so now we got these new bolts. And they're supposed to go like this. And they're real, real close. Not only that, but they're worse than close head hits the axle right here no matter how you turn it it's gonna hit and get worse and worse the further you put it in there I tried to tap on one a little bit and it just gets worse and worse out of shape so I guess after looking at the factory ones get the thing to focus a little bit there you go they got a flat side on them So I guess we get to do that to all these, and lucky for us, they're just grade 8 bolts, so they ought to grind real easy, right? <laughs> I wish. So we're going to grind all these down, try to get them to fit in here, and then maybe we can start slapping all this stuff together. Here we go. Got one ground down, let's see if they'll fit in here now. Get some light going. Got to line it up on the right side. Oh, wow. That's one. <laughs> All right, wow. There we go, just... Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. Now, we... now we're getting somewhere. Now you can get then we put the spacer thing on, right? Right. And then the axle. All right. Here we go.
calipers next. So here's where we're at. Looks real good, but after doing some more investigation, it looks like that all this right here is on backward and the caliper needs to be on the back side, not the front side. We got to looking at it because it seemed like it was going to be hard to get the e-brake cable to do this weird bend to get into the caliper. So we're looking at it more and the pictures look like one thing. However, who's to say where this axle's at, if it's front, if it's facing front, facing back, whatever. It's just an axle sitting on a jack stand. It could be facing either way. But, if you come over here where all these words are. So, calipers straight back. It's not straight forward. So, we get to tear this down and redo it again. Okay, here's where we're at now. Let's see if we can get some light. No. No, there she goes. So, we got all this assembled correctly. We got the parking brake cable here now. I guess that is dead. This goes into this hole and then hooks in back here. But it's a little short. So we're hoping there's some adjustment down here. It looks like there's a spot. Maybe we can adjust it. I don't know if we're going to get that much out of it or not, though. Now we got the soft line connected here. It did come with a little tab you could weld onto your frame. Hold on, let me try and get some light. Is this the one with the dead battery still? So it did come with a little tab you could weld onto the frame here, but it's already got a kind of a tab on there. We could cut it and try to get some of that loop out of it, but I don't know. We can always go back and mess with that some more it's clear of everything it's not rubbing anything so we're gonna see how that works the parking brake cable is too short there's some adjustment are there but it looks like it's just gonna adjust the pedal height it's not actually gonna change where this is cuz it's welded on a bracket that's welded to the frame under here so unless it gets closer when we let the car down then we're probably gonna just have to get another cable kit for it we'll see what the other side does the other one may be the same way it may be too too short also I don't know let's see so the next step on here that we just realized is that the disc I don't know if you can see in there but it is not all the way against the back and uh, the axle facing right there there's a gap. This disc is not going all the way on. The other side was the same way. And we get to looking into it, and it looks like that the lugs have... Let's see if it'll pick up here. There it is. This tapered spot right here. The hole pattern... Let me see. The hole pattern that lines up is this one, and if you look and see here, I can get it to pick up, but this, the threads fit in there, and the shoulder doesn't, so it leaves your backing plate sitting basically that far off. We'll come over here, I'll show you. So, all this tapered spot is coming out, and that does not fit into the rotor. So, we tried to find another set of lug nuts, or lugs, that didn't have the taper on them. Maybe just straight from thread to knurl, but we could not find those. Uh, locally, anyway. And so, that's where it leaves us. So now, the next seemingly best, easiest thing to do is to drill these out. So, I took a step bit rounded her out in there and this fits in there just like it needs to but that's going to be a lot of drilling and I don't think that step bit's going to take it we got another drill bit here I think we decided we need a 9 16 hole hopefully that's right so now we have to re-drill five holes on here 
five holes on there. Maybe the disc will go on further and maybe everything will work out. So that's where we're at now. It's at this point we decided, let's go get a drill press, let's drill them out right, and let's try to do the best we can with what we got. Not be all wonkety and whatever. So I think we're gonna call it a wrap right here with this video. I tried to get it in in two episodes, but it wasn't happening, just too, too many flaws. So keep up with the build. I got a new build coming up. I got a stereo system build coming up. There may be a little bit of overlap here between the stereo system and the brakes, but I'm just trying to get all this content in, trying to get caught up on some of this content. The stereo system build is going to be epic and the brakes are coming to a halt. We got a whole lot going on and a whole lot more to come. So mash that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.